Welcome back to B Varsity Live. Zach Ewing here in the Dignity Health Studios. Another 15 minutes, another coach in studio with us. It's back to the SYL. I think this is our last SYL stop. It is. Uh, and it is Golden Valley's Eric Smith. Coach, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. And uh, this is a team, by the way, that was pretty good two and three years ago and could be very good again this year. Is that right? Yes. At, at least you hope that's that how it works out. But the <laughs> it's what we work for. The, the point is you do bring quite a bit back. T talk to us a little bit about some of the guys who will stick out this year. Uh, we're, we're pretty proud of our tailback. You know, he's going to be a three-year starter for us. This yeah, will be Andrew his third Dean. year is Andrew yeah. Dean. Uh, we also have Jacob Vallejo, outside wide receiver, Ja'Kai Harrell, slot receiver, Chris Williams, slot receiver. Those guys are, have all been uh, either three- or two-year starters. So a lot of them have played his sophomore years uh, with us. So that's a lot of talent to go with our very, you know, still young quarterback junior who got his feet wet last year. But this year, we really expect big things on him, of him. And we, Tyler Waters, uh, we expect him to step his game up. He, he's actually going to get a little more freedom. He'll call his own plays a few times. And so he's worked real hard to really understand the offense. So the by offense. the time he's a senior, he could really be – you know, kind of that that coach on the field. Yeah, he's just he's got all the tools. He has the size. Uh, we need to work a little more on his speed a little bit, but he's got the arm strength and he's worked real hard this year on his accuracy. Eric, and I'm a, being able to pull the trigger quick too. I'm a big fan of the big uglies, and you seem to have a good number of them. Is that size translating into a lot of talent that you have on the offensive defensive side of the ball at the? On the line? Well, I think it actually it's a it's a funny joke as a coaching staff because we have three offensive linemen as coaches, and so <laughs> my staff has a lot of linemen. So we actually take pride. But I tell you, this year that's where we've had to rebuild. Okay. And we we're having to move some younger guys up. Okay. And we're going to have some juniors starting, uh, but we are pretty proud of what we have. That as far as linemen in the system, our JV line is actually they're pretty big. You know, they're coming up, and then we have adapted. We've actually moved a couple defensive players over. We had one of our linebackers. Uh, his name is Dima Riza. He's actually moved from linebacker to offensive line, help us with a little bit of speed. Uh, for, we, we're a pull and trap team. You know, we don't, we're not necessarily a zone team, so we like that speed up front. And then we also, I'm real proud of them in their weight room. Our weight room really got back to the roots. And uh, our linemen kind of took pride in getting their names on the board and the weight room board. And uh, I think that will pay off later in the season, hmm. and uh, it, the closer you get to playoffs. And it's, right. a, it's a new league, and it's a tough league, really, if you look at it. Uh, what, what do you make of that new league? I mean, are you happy with, with the fit, with bringing in Independence to Atropy? I mean, those are tough, tough opponents. Yeah, they are. And, you know, and I tell the kids we don't control the league. You know, they, I, I tell them it's an honor to be put in this category. So for us, you know, it's been kind of a focal point. We are going to have to play. It reminds me of the SSL days when I was, uh, we started off at Golden Valley. We were playing Tehachapi. And we know that Coach Demon, what he runs, what he stands for. So I, he hasn't changed in 30 plus years. Right. Uh, our nemesis has kind of been independence. We've met him the few, last few years in the playoffs and we've been close. And it's just, for whatever reason, we have, we've come up short a few times. So. Yeah. I think that's gonna. Those are all gonna be good games, and then and the league will be very competitive. I think. I think it's gonna be a battle for five weeks, and because you just never know. I think everybody's gonna have it, and I, I think you know it'll take a little bit, but you know, Coach Fanuki will turn east around. Well, <coughs> while we're talking about it, let's flash up uh, Golden Valley schedule here. This is your schedule for the year. You open in a couple of weeks at Taft. Uh, at Miramonte, at Taft, and you have had a couple of great opening games the last couple of years, very good games. That's a, a very balanced non-league schedule where you're, you're going to have a couple of teams that are really going to challenge you, and you have a couple of teams where maybe you get to be the favorite too. Yeah, you know, and one thing playing a week zero game, Taft has always been ready for us. So we've always felt comfortable, uh, especially playing them. We feel it's, it's a good, solid game, and, and hopefully we can get out of there and really compete and thing we need to do is just keep improving. Uh, the big game for us will be Frontier, just because on paper, size-wise, we're going to have – we'll be at a disadvantage. They're huge. But yeah. that's okay. You know, we told our guys that. Um, we're not necessarily worried about their size, and only 11 can play once on the field. So <laughs> we'll work on that. You know, we have some pretty good speed in the right areas, and I think we'll be okay. And then, my goodness, when you get you, – you talk about all five weeks, but especially those first three in league play, Ridgeview, add Independence to Hatchby, boom, boom, boom uh, – the mental part of that is going to be as important as the physical part, maybe, of just staying focused every week. Because if you don't, those teams will beat you. 
correct. But we don't really necessarily have to get too hyped for Ridgeview. They're only, what, a half mile away. So right. that, that game actually feeds itself. It's been moved into the middle of the season instead of the end like it used to be. Um, so I don't really worry about that. The kids, they know what's at stake. They know what their goals are. This is a heavy senior class. and They actually have good leadership, which has been very nice. And I think they understand their long-term goals. And, and they're, it's simple. Their goals, they want to get past the first round. They want to get into playoffs and then get it past the first round. These guys remember last year, uh, and they, they didn't like that. Yeah. Coach, I want to bring up your quarterback. I mean, we know that you have one of the better running backs coming back in, in your league. Um, you brought up your nemesis, uh, Independence, and, and we were able to watch that game last year. And it seemed like as a young quarterback, he struggled with, with what most young quarterbacks do is pressure in his face. And, and talk about you know how he's progressed or what type of things that you have done to challenge him to progress, to handle the type of pressure that he's going to see on teams like that, 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 that absolutely come after the quarterback? Well, I think for him, he needed to understand the defenses that were coming at him. So he spent the offseason studying film. He understands some of the blitzes. And he knew that he, he was given a four, what we call four on four scenario. They were blitzing either six or seven guys. He had to make the throws. Our guys were open when he broke that film down. Uh, he still gets a little frustrated today when he watches it. And he didn't. He didn't make. There was some corner routes he didn't make, and he knew that. And he says, I'll make those routes. I'll practice that, and I'll be able to stay in there. And he also has to know it, it, there's a mental toughness for a quarterback that you you got to lead that front leg, and you need to be able to deliver that ball, even though that linebacker is going to pop you underneath your chin. And he, I think he will understand that this year. I think he knows that he's going to have to take a few hits. But at the same time, I think our line is understanding. They're starting to gel. We had a pretty good week of practice this week, and I think they'll keep most of the guys off of him this year. You've had a, a, some good quarterbacks over the years in your tenure there and some really good wide receivers as well. You kind of had that fun and gun era. Is that still your mentality even when you've got a guy like Andrew in the backfield, or do you lean more towards a traditional let's start with the running game? Uh, we actually do. We do both. You know, we we always advertise ourselves as a throwing team. Uh, we like to get the skill guys out in space. But at the same time, um, Andrew knows that we're going to give him his carries. And it kind of depends. Our goal is, is that we'll take the offense and to every week. And depending on what you throw at us, we're going to flex it. And so I like it. I think, you know, to be honest, as you go back and you study your stats from previous seasons and you study your success, we're actually a better 50-50 team. Hmm. And a lot of people, I don't think, realize that. Um, but this year, you know, our quarterback is actually a very good runner. He's a big kid. He's a solid kid, and he's hard to bring down. And so that, that's actually going to play a little more action this year. Um, but we have some receivers that, you know, they're not, they're kind of egotistical. They want the ball too. So it's a, <laughs> As it's all a challenge are. in practice. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of, of what Gerald Pierucci said yesterday that, hey, you know, we're, we're looked at as a passing team, but we're 50 50. When Kern County, 50 50 is a passing team. No, nobody <laughs> else throws yes, it, it that much. <laughs> we're, um, I mean, with all of the senior leadership and as much explosiveness you have on offense, where is your, your expectation level for this team? If, if you could kind of crystal ball it, I know you probably don't want to say too much if your guys are listening, but do you have a pretty high expectations for these guys this year? Oh, yes. You know, and, and actually, I've addressed that with the team. You know, we, we kind of set a standard. Uh, we tried to, and we even had some of the first, very first alumni teams back when Coach Arnett. They asked a couple guys have come back and talked to our guys. This year was the first time we ever did that. We've been 10 years now, school open, so it was nice. And, you know, these guys had no idea who they were. And it was just we're trying to set an expectation of competing every week. And I tell them that if you can do that, everything else is going to fall in line. And, you know, like you said, when we put up our schedule, we have a tough road at a few bits in that in the middle of that season. And right. we're going to have to be able to compete. And hopefully mentally that's probably the number one I'm working on. It's just compete at a high level, finish every play you start. Yeah. And that's what we've really been preaching this year. Wait, I was thinking about Golden Valley earlier today, and I, I don't know that, that you guys fit into any one category when we start talking about teams around Bakersfield because you're no longer the newest school. You've, you've had Frontier, Miramonte, Independence since, since Golden Valley opened. You're not exactly an east side school way down there, uh, you know, almost south of town. Uh, but, but you're certainly not a west side school. You kind of have that feel of being – the underdog, but you've had some league championships too. I mean, ha when you look at your program, you've been there a while now. What would you like to be, and how close are you to that? Well, we like to be in the upper echelon. Our goal is always be at the top in the league. Um, 
I'll say we're kind of the hidden school. I think a lot of people don't know about us, and our kids are kind of they're kind of quiet. We don't make a whole lot of noise, but at the same time, you know, we want to be known that when you play us, you're playing a solid program, you're right. playing a solid team, and so hopefully we can get that with this new league. I mean, that, that's your new goal. I think everybody's going to set that goal. You know, things have changed. Back in the past, you had to be league champs to get the playoffs. So a couple years ago, we actually changed. Our coaches got together and said, you don't need to be league champs to go to playoffs anymore. So your goals can somewhat change a little bit. And if you don't necessarily get the league championship, you now need to still set the goal to get the playoffs. So it's kind of weird. You know, it's not the past. It's not the 90s and early 2000s where you had to be league champ to move up. And so nowadays, you can get yourself and you can still make a run into the playoffs. And that's that's always our goal. Well, and that also helps as a coach, too, because, you know, you take a couple, you know, bumps here, bumps there. You could say, guys, listen, as long as we're the best we can be when the regular season ends, we still got a shot to keep playing in through November. Yeah, and that's what's nice. And I'll tell you, that actually helps the motivation, too. Yeah. Kids don't fold and the team doesn't fold up. There's no panic necessarily when you're 0-3, at least not long-term yeah, panic no. I mean you got to get it fixed but you can make a recovery and that's nice and then and, you know back in the old days you couldn't do that yeah yeah right. well Eric Smith of Golden Valley uh last SYL coach in and I think really kind of the sleeper maybe in that race I think it's fair to say that because you don't hear your name mentioned a lot with Ridgeview and Independence and Tatchby but boy you guys have a history of success and a history of some surprise league titles over the over the years including one in the SEYL when, when Bakersfield still played in it so uh that was back in 06 Good luck this year. Thanks for being here, and uh, I'm sure we'll talk soon. Thank you. And up next is our last SWYL coach. That's Tim Anton Giovanni of Garces coming up after the break here on B Varsity Live.